Hey guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. Once again, it is time for a shop tour. We are in our first week of May, Thursday, May 4th. You can see in May here, we've got a bunch of action shots from Dagan's Quad Racing. Um, he actually has uh, gone pro racing this year. So he and his dad are spending a lot more time, effort, and money to go pro racing. Good for them. Good luck, guys. Um, by the way, guys, if you like these shop tours and if you like some of the other videos on the channel, do me a favor and hit the like button, hit the share button, and subscribe to the channel. That way you can always... Uh, uh, get notified when uh, any new videos come up, such as the in-car video for the Spec Racer Ford 3 down at Hallett hit the channel this morning. So check it out. Here's the link right here. Pretty exciting, I think. So, All right, let's get right into it. So over the last week or so, I've had a lot of differentials um, running through the shop. Most of them are painted this green color because they're for one company. Uh, this is actually an NC. I don't do as many NCs as I do NBs, um, but these are out of, you know, the later model MX-5s. So I'm just finishing up uh, the backlash here. So on these, to adjust your backlash, you have shims on either side of the differential that go between the cap and... Um, in the bearing uh, between the outer between what am I trying to say between the outer shell of the differential and the bearing and it does two things it not only does it set your backlash but it also sets your bearing preload so as you can see I have a bunch of options here so these range from fairly thin to pretty thick on the bottom now there's only just to give you an idea of how precise this is there's only about two to three thousandths difference between each one of these. But if you don't have these, you cannot get your backlash and your bearing preload right. So very, very important part of building this style of differential and a very different differential than the NB diffs were. So anyway, kind of interesting. All right, guys, rolling around here, I've got a whole pile of bits and pieces for the Nissan. So at the end of the race um, on uh, Sunday, Bob reported that his clutch pedal was going to the floor and he wasn't able to shift it and he actually ended up finishing third because of it. So we have never been into this uh, transmission and clutch and flywheel. So we've got a whole slew of upgrades here. Um, Z1 Motorsports sells a new slave cylinders kit, which is allowed for, two, for T3. But while I'm in there, I'm going to go ahead and change the rear main seal. Obviously, we're going to get a new throwout bearing and a whole new setup, but we're also allowed to go away from the dual mass flywheel. So I'm going to a one-piece flywheel and an upgraded clutch here, as you can see. The reason that I like to go away from the dual mass is when you shift, the dual mass gives you a little in-between delay so you don't get as crisp of a hit when you shift the car. Well, in a race car, I want it to hit as hard as it can. So we're gonna go away from the dual mass. Also finally got in the two piece rear rotors. It took like almost three months to get these, but aluminum hats um, with the rear rotors. These are uh, five pounds a piece lighter in the rear. The fronts were 10 pounds a piece lighter if you guys remember seeing that. So as soon as I get these differentials under control, it is time to get into tearing the transmission out of the Z car. So that's going to be next on on tap. So moving around this direction you can see I've got three differentials sitting here that are completed obviously the same beautiful color and every one of these is a little different. So we've got we've got one for a guy that has a 4.3 with a torsen but we rimmed the bearings on this particular um, differential. So that's not for a spec Miata, it's for a track day car and we rim the bearings just like we rim uh, when we have the opportunity some of the gears to reduce friction. So we've got a 4.3 with a rimmed bearing, we've got a 3.9 with an OS Geiken limited slip and also a 4.3 Torsen for a standard spec Miata. And then I have two of the NC's to get done and then another 
you can't even see it, but it's in this lovely box that got destroyed by FedEx. Um, we've got another differential and a limited slip in there. So I'm in a little bit of differential mode. Um, I also need to get Paul Peniter's uh, differential out of his box and start working on it. I did get a new ring and pinion rimmed for him, so I'm going to be working on that as well. But one of the drawbacks, the only real drawback to this paint, I mean, I kind of like the, they call this grabber green. But when you paint these things, it tends to kind of drift all over the shop floor. So, um, quick tip of the day, this paint actually comes off your floor pretty easy after it dries. So, if you have a good sealed concrete floor like I do, after it's all dried up, you can just sweep it up and clean it up. So, no worries about the green paint. So, don't have a bunch of cars in the shop this week. Uh, the Camaro's off to Gateway this weekend, got a couple of the other cars done. So, I finally got the opportunity to do something that I've been kind of waiting on for about a year. I've had the bits and pieces, but I brought down my... Kawasaki Vulcan Vaquero. Um, I love this motorcycle. Uh, I've owned a bunch of motorcycles over the years, but um, I probably had a preference for this one when I first saw it because of this beautiful blue color. And as you guys know, I'm kind of partial to blue. But this is a really cool motorcycle and 1700cc uh, V-twin. Lots of horsepower. Um, gives me an opportunity when you can't go to the racetrack to get out on the street and uh, kind of do a little bit of hot rodding around, got some friends that we go riding with. But what I'm in the middle of here is a new stereo and speaker install. So I've got a new head unit, I've got a new Rockford Fosgate amp, and I'm working on wiring all of this up. The other thing that I've got going on here is I've got a handlebar control interface. So I'm going to be able to control the radio through my hand buttons like I used to be able to with the factory stuff. So got four, Six and a half inch Rockford Fosgate speakers. We're going to put a couple in the saddlebags back here, a couple in the front. This thing ought to really bump. So, uh, like I said, I've because I've got a little bit of room in the shop finally, I this has been taking up a little bit of my 15 minutes a day because the BMW is looking so good. So, um, prep continues. Basically, all I've got left now is a final cleaning. Everything's been checked over. Uh, Greg's coming to run the car here in just a couple of weeks at Heartland Park. And so uh, another thing I wanted to point out to you guys is I use these Schumacher, they used to be called smart chargers, now they're kind of called speed chargers. When you're running a total loss system, you need to have a really good battery charger. And this one allows me to pick the type of battery and the amperage. So you can see it's sitting, it says charged and it's sitting right here in the low 13s on voltage so once the battery is charged it kicks over into maintain mode and um, when you're not running an alternator you need to be very diligent about the type of battery you're running obviously this is a monster Optima I'm kind of partial to Optima batteries um, if you don't need a super lightweight option but the right battery and the right charger makes all the difference and uh, this is one of the ways I have a lot of success um, with a total loss system. It's super, super important, but we're looking really good. Um, got the tires all cleaned up and checked. I always like to scrape them with the curry comb and take a look at them. We're going to use the tires that we ran at VIR. These tires did not get a lot of hot run time at VIR simply because of the conditions that he had to run in a bunch. So we're hoping for some better conditions at Heartland Park in a couple weeks and uh, we'll get this race under uh, under our belt and then Greg will be qualified for the runoffs and then we'll spend the summer um, getting the car prepped and go for another national championship so lots of room in the shop right now but believe me when I tell you it will be filled back up before you know it so appreciate you guys watching um, like I said before Make sure you uh, do me a favor and like, share, and subscribe for the channel. And check out the Spec Racer Ford in-car video. And uh, appreciate your guys' comments. And uh, I'll be seeing you next week with a lot more fun things to talk about. Have a great rest of your week. Take care.